the Fiesta ST. It's like the little brother to the Focus ST, and the 500 Abarth, it's the caffeinated version of Fiat's capable city car. Many, many of you have asked us to drive these two cars. So here we are, seeing how much performance you can pack into these tiny, tiny packages, or to look at it another way, turbos are fun. There's plenty of driving fun to be had in the Abarth. It's a little atypical. It's, it's not perfect, but that kind of makes it fun. Of course, we drove the Focus ST and liked that an awful lot. This is its kind of angry, doesn't want to be overlooked little brother. And this is a case of little brother being better at some things than the older brother. Now the Fiesta looks like a miniature copy of the Focus. It's there's so many styling cues that are nearly alike. You can really get a sense of family. It's sort of the sea creature, aggressive, really sharp styling, which I like. I like it, but I don't love it. It feels a little bit chopped, and, and I feel like the styling plays up the size in a bad way. It's not until I park it next to the Fiat 500 that I realize this Fiesta is actually quite a bit larger than that. Standing by itself, it just kind of looks minute and cropped and roller skate-like because this styling feels almost too big for the car. Now the interior of the Fiesta is interesting. What I like is that the styling matches the exterior. The kinds of shapes relate to the outside of the car. There's nothing about the interior that really is fantastic and eye-catching. It doesn't have the cute factor like the Abarth or just that surprise and delight kind of thing going on. So you start touching some of the plastics around the car. That's where you can tell this is a cheap car. Those are the places where they've saved money. It's not a strike against it. It's just a reality of this price point. There is a lot packed into this car. These gauges are great. They're incredibly easy to read. All of your information is well laid out. All the things that are involved with actual driver enjoyment, that's all been done perfectly well. But I like the driving position in the Fiesta a lot better. These seats are good. They're not amazing, but they are very good. There's a little bit more room in the back than I was expecting. Big guys like us, it's gonna be difficult, but it is a usable back seat. It's somewhat practical. It is still pretty small. I will say the pedals are not in a ideal location for heel towing, and the Abarth does that quite a bit better. But then when you get the turbo going, <laughs> that's the reason you want to buy it. And this engine just loves to hang out at Redline. Loves it. You could tune it. You could really just put a lot of horsepower through the wheels if you want. But as it is, nearly 200 horsepower, it doesn't feel lacking. This car has almost the exact same horsepower and total weight as an FRS or BRZ. Now, those cars get talked about about being far underpowered and way too slow, including by us. But yet, you get it into this subcompact genre, and suddenly seven seconds feels like a fast car. But the turbo makes this car so strong. And you, you got to keep in mind, this isn't a heavy car. But here I am, bashing up this canyon road, and I'm not feeling like this car is lacking by any means. The response underfoot is pretty much instantaneous. Part of that is the turbo output that gives you a lot of torque really early on. The power feels a bit more readily available in this car, but the truth is it's not really any faster than the Abarth. I've always thought I was more into natural aspiration, but this car has proved I am now addicted to boost. This does have the same sound symposium, the same one you find on the Focus ST. You can really hear this engine note in the cabin, but it's not nearly the exhaust note of that Fiat. The handling and steering input on the Fiesta ST has shocked me. On center, there is no dead spot. There's just more input. The steering is electric, doesn't have a whole lot of feel, but it's very precise. 
Steering ratio on the ST is as tight as an S2000. This is single ratio, that's it. And it's, it's magic, it's very sharp. As sharp as many rear wheel drive cars. What's shocking about the ST is this rotates like no front wheel drive car I've ever driven, and I'm including the Focus ST in that. I'm continually amazed at how well you could rotate this car by just what you're doing with the throttle. Lifting off causes it to rotate, putting your foot back in it causes it to scrabble for grip and pull you out of the corner. This is a surprisingly agile vehicle. And what's great about the Fiesta is the suspension tuning. It's very well suited for those canyon roads. It's more aggressive than most cars, and so you might think that that would just beat you up on the freeway or a straight road. It's great. Yes, you can feel it's more aggressive, but it feels that way all the time, and for this little car, that's what I want. We're on a road that has a real tendency to pull out the understeer on a front-wheel drive car, and this ST is all but laughing at it. The Fiesta ST does have Ford's torque vectoring system, which is essentially a brake-based system that breaks the inside wheel to kind of tuck you around through the corner. And you add that to the scale of this car and the incredibly sharp turn-in. The rotation is truly astounding. Whereas the Abarth surprises itself and you every time it goes through a corner, this is so predictable, but it's predictably sharp. The rotation and predictability are along the lines of the best balanced cars you've driven. And so you can realize that and now start to push harder and harder because the Fiesta ST is just up for it. It's like it's constantly got something to prove and it's got a little more to work with. This car can outhandle many cars across the board. This is a case of being nearly dead on. I love rear wheel drive cars, but there actually are a few cars that I would pick this over. It is possible to put your foot down coming out of a corner and feel a little bit of that front wheel scrabble. But you've got to be pushing pretty hard to induce that. And then as soon as you think, oh, it's front wheel drive and it's going to start to push through the corner, that back end just comes right around. <laughs> it's fantastic. I wouldn't describe this car as having body roll. I would just say that it kind of hunkers down in a corner over one wheel. It doesn't really feel like it rolls, where at the Fiat, it feels like it's rolling. With the traction control turned off, I can tell exactly what the tires are doing, and I can make it do what I want it to do, and it never seems to complain. It just gets it done. What it's doing is just increasing your confidence as you're driving and hammering through corners. And the way the car goes around a corner, you might forget that this is a front wheel drive car. The Fiesta is that good. <laughs> That's uncanny. That's so good. I knew the Fiesta ST was good, but I wanted to hold back a little bit and see really what people are talking about. And damn it, it's good. The Fiesta ST is one of those lightning in a bottle moments in life. Because it's such a small car that keeps the weight down, because of the ST tuning, it's got incredible body control. All of the pieces have just worked together to make a car that is much better than you would ever expect. It's not like the Fiesta is great at a few things, and if only they did blank better, the shifter, the seats, something about the steering. This is the complete package, and I'm having trouble telling you not to buy the Fiesta ST because I want one. Hands down, this is a car I would buy. In general, I'm not a huge fan of a front-wheel drive car. I'm always gonna buy that third after rear-wheel drive and all-wheel drive. But I have to say, with these dynamics, the Fiesta ST is a car that I would buy. Okay, okay, so how much power can you cram into cars this size? <laughs> well, apparently gobs. 
this, according to these two. This one has 60% more horsepower than the original 500. <laughs> That's fantastic. 60%. Imagine that in a 300 horsepower car. You gotta start low to be able to add 60%. <laughs> and it was. We were hard on the original 500. Yeah. Admittedly, we were pretty hard on that car. Well, but it's a great city car. It it's is. It's not it an is. enthusiast car. No, but the Abarth is. Yes, I agree with you. Clean agree slate. You. I wasn't expecting how much fun I had. This has a lot more personality even than the Fiesta. This is yeah, just, it does. every time I drove it, I had a ball in this car. It's really fun. Well, so here's the problem. The Fiesta ST exists. That's kind of the Abarth's problem. Yes, that's a great point. Because here's the thing. That is an atom bomb in the class. It really the Abarth is. is really a great car for this tiny little compact performance class. Money. It's just the Fiesta ST competes across multiple classes at 25 grand. Well, so that just means Todd and I agreed, which doesn't happen very often. Yes, we I... should not make a habit of that. You know what I thought about actually on the Fiesta? That is essentially the same stats as the BRZ FRS. It's 2,700 pounds, just under 200 horsepower. Now, nobody's saying this car is slow. Now, maybe that's the turbo, but I do find it interesting. You it's know almost what? almost the same stat. I would pick this car over BRZ. I would not. But we can't agree on everything. We, I love the BRZ too, but hadn't driven this yet. This is great. You have to drive both these yeah. cars, and we want to know for 25 grand, what would you buy? If you've had a rough day and you hop into this car, you're going to forget about everything. You're just going to have so much fun driving it. The Fiat 500 is not the performance success of the Fiesta ST, but it is a superb sports car version of the standard 500. The Fiesta is so unbelievably capable. It is the better car here. It is the sharper instrument, and it's brilliant on this road. And when you consider the price point here, I mean, loaded out at 25 grand, if you're an enthusiast, this is a holy grail moment 